Okay, so this is for CE review test number four, right? Okay, you should be looking at the back page of your study guide. On the back page of your study guide, it says, know your diatomic elements and the elements that hang together. What are the diatomics? Is that the Brown-Hifkel? That is Brown-Hifkel. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's not writing. Why are we not writing? I swear. Oh, honestly. Let me bring it down and back up again. That's writing over here. Why is it writing over here? Because it's because we switched. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now it'll write there. Now we'll write there. Okay. So Brown Hef go. And now it won't come up over here because I shut it down. All right. I'll look in there. It's coming just slow. Okay, so bromine, oxygen, um, nitrogen, chlorine, fluorine. Okay, we got it, we're going. Okay, they're up here. Okay, Bronhifkel. There's also two others that you need to know. Which other two are they? Does anybody know? So, bromine, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen iodine, fluorine, chlorine. These all come in pairs. These are the diatomics. But there's two others. They're the special children on the periodic table. I keep calling them. They're special. We do things special because of them. Do you remember which ones they are? Hydrogen. Nope. Well, well hydrogen's no. already up there. Yeah, that one is a weird one. P.S. by the way, they get it their way. Phosphorus in, in fours and sulfur in eights. Okay. Sulfur can do twos, and phosphorus can do twos, but they're more stable here. Okay, how to classify if a compound is an ionic or covalent. So if you're looking at the periodic table really quickly, here's drawing a periodic table. We know that francium is the lowest electronegativity, fluorine is the highest, the noble gases have zero for electronegativity because they do not want any more electrons, right? So. The farther apart two elements are, like here and here, the more ionic it will be. As they get closer, even if you don't have the electronegativities, remember you can take and subtract the electronegativities and get a number. What was that slide? It was a sliding scale from being covalent to being ionic with polar covalent in the middle. Do you remember what those dividing lines were? Oh, it's, it's um, point five. Okay, 0 0.5 is one of them. And what's the other one? Well, I heard 1.7 and 1.9. Which is it? Seven. It's 1.7. Yeah. Okay, it is 1.7. So if you remember those, okay, that'll help if she gives you the electronegativity. But if she does not, you need to be able to look at the periodic table. The what red squares that I've got here and here, that would be ionic. As I come down to maybe here and here, see how they're getting closer? That's polar covalent. Thank you. As I'm getting two up here where they're both nonmetals, the blue, that's covalent. So as they get closer, covalent. As they get far apart, it's all about I, all about me, right? Give and take electrons. That's ionic. Okay, so you need to be able to do that. Know how many um, covalent bonds and element, that S went with the A, sorry. Yeah. So, for instance, if I have sulfur and sulfur, I need to know how many bonds that they'll share together. So, I need to know Lewis dot. What's Lewis dot for sulfur? Six. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And I've got another one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Isn't this when they, form they both four? need two, right? So this one's going to share, and this one's going to share. So as I rewrite it, they're sharing two in the center, right? So that's two lines sharing in the center. There are two unshared, right? So I put them equally spaced out here, and I can tell that's going to be in a plane. So each of those sulfurs would be a trigonal planar because it would be in a plane. There's not an extra on it. Okay, know how many lone pairs are ghosts? That's what I was calling these, lone pairs are ghosts. Okay, remember that as you go along, um, 
basically like nitrogen's family, all of nitrogen needs three more, so it will form with another nitrogen three bonds. It will share here, here, and here. And it's not writing very fast. So as I rewrite it, it would be three lines between them and just two that are not shared or unshared pairs and they go directly opposite. So that's when we were figuring out how many bonds it can form. Just think, if it's in oxygen's column, it's going to be two. If it's in nitrogen's column, it's going to be three. Okay? Remember that funky one with cyanide. Carbon and carbon and hyd or nitrogen will form three bonds. Okay, carbon and nitrogen. If it's just carbon, one carbon and one nitrogen. Okay. So oxygen's row has how many bonds? Two. It'll make two if it's bonding with something that's in that same column. Okay, B, the nitrogen with three. Um, be able to determine the correct way to draw Lewis structure and include all the electrons and the bonds. So we've sort of done that already, but if we were given something like, let me give you something new, um, carbon H2Cl2, and I needed to draw that. Okay? I needed to pick from a picture which one it was. Please draw it on your own first before you go down to the pictures. So I look at the, the, look at the stem first, draw it, then see if yours fits one of the pictures. So the first thing I do is I draw each individual one's Lewis stop. So there's um, hydrogens and carbons and chlorines. And as I look at this, I can see carbon is the one that needs the most. Hydrogen only needs one, and I've got to remember, it can only make one bond. Hydrogen will never be the center. So if you remember that, you're good. And chlorine only needs one bond. Well, I've got two hydrogens, and I've got two chlorines, and they each only need one, right? But carbon here needs four. So carbon's going to be my center molecule. Carbon in the center. It's going to have four bonds. One of them is going to be to the hydrogen, sharing its one bond. Another one to the other hydrogen. Does it matter where I put it? No, it does not. Okay. And then the other two bonds are going to be shared with chlorine. So chlorine will have eight around it. Remember the line represents two electrons. Okay. So that would be my diagram. What shape would that molecule make? Remember, carbon has four things attached to it. That's our tetrahedral shape. That's this shape. What was the angle on that? I'm reviewing a whole bunch of things in case we don't get it. 109.5, you need to know that. So it's tetrahedral, it doesn't stay in a plane, it's a 3D molecule, and it has 109.5. Okay, right here, 109.5. Okay, so you should be able to draw any. Let's just do... Um, this one for fun. I know you love fun, right? H, C, N. Just to practice it. Okay? So, again, hydrogen. Um, we'll have one, and this time I'm going to make it green just because nitrogen's always blue. And nitrogen has five around it. One, two, three, four, five. And our carbon, again, is always black, and it has four. Now, as I look at this one, this one gets a little bit more tricky. Which one do I put in the center? Well, if I look at it and say, okay, hydrogen needs how many? One. Carbon needs how many? Four. How many does nitrogen need? Three. So I put the one that needs the most in the center. So I'm going to put carbon in the center. And since nitrogen needs three, I'm going to put, I'll draw this twice, I'm going to put three of carbons on nitrogen side to share with three of nitrogens and then we put nitrogen there. Nitrogen has two extra. Well, if I look at nitrogen here and do that circle thing we were doing at the beginning, I can see that nitrogen has eight. It's done. But if I look at carbon, carbon had a total of four. I've only shown three. So opposite this bond, I'm going to put the other one. Hydrogen only needed one, so I'm going to put a hydrogen right here. Now look at it again. Carbon in the center needed a total of eight. It now has eight. And 
hydrogen needed two to be like a noble gas, so it has two. So redrawing it in black and white, we go hydrogen has one bond to carbon, which has three bonds to nitrogen, which has one pair it didn't share. Okay? Okay, what shape would that one be? Is that bent? That is not bent. Okay, think of when I had the people up here. This will help. Think when I had the people up here and they were shaking hands, remember, and holding hands. What happened when they went to three? It was really unstable, right? It has to stay in a line. So since it's in a line, because this does not bend, if it bends, it breaks, right? So this is 180 here as far as the angle, and it is linear. Anytime you have 180, it's going to be linear. Okay? So remember I told you, this is a good question. He said, how do you tell if one is bent? So what if I gave you H2S? Okay, H2S, rotten egg gas. So sulfur had, if you do it the way that I've taught you, so if they say, okay, what's the shape of this? And they give you a diagram. Don't look at their diagram. Do it the way I showed you. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and that's how many sulfur has. And you bring in hydrogen here, and you bring in hydrogen here, you can see that that's bent, right? That, what is that angle on the bent one, by the way? Reviewing. It has two unshared pair of electrons, or two ghosts, so it's going to sh shoot it down two degrees for each ghost and drop the 0.5. What do we get? One whole five. Now, sometimes, and I can't remember if it, this, this test, sometimes they'll say 104.5. Um, but that, I think, was in your Learn Smart or your homeworks. That was the angle that they gave you. But most textbooks say 105. Okay? Now, remember I told you how they would draw this on the test, that you've got to be careful? They're going to draw this instead of like what we would draw it, like this. Okay? They're going to draw it like this, where it has it looking like it's linear. Yeah, so how do we tell that? So how do you tell? I have got two unshared pair of electrons, right? And I know if four things are attached to somebody, it's a tetrahedral shape like this, right? And so I say, okay, if two are unshared, it has to be bent. What they're doing is they're showing it this way. So you don't see the bent. But it's still there, right? They're just showing it this way. So you got to think in your mind, okay, if four things are attached, even if they're unshared pairs of electrons, it's still this shape, okay? It's still this shape. It's just that these two are now unshared pair of electrons, and only those two are being shared. And this is how I taught you to see it. If you draw the Lewis dot the way I told you, you'll see it bent. But this is the way they're showing it to you. Okay, so be careful. Okay, um, next one. What are we on? Know the shapes and the angles. So the other um, one was like NH3. Sometimes they use PH3 or PCl3. It'll be the same kind of shape. Nitrogen has five around it. You bring in your hydrogens here, here, and here. Okay. Remember that this unshared pair of electrons, the ghost, scares the others closer together, right? So we actually, when we draw it, we draw it in a little bit up with these down a little bit, because that'll also help us telling if the molecule is polar or not polar. Okay? What shape is that? Trigonal pyramidal, or trigonal pyramidal, however you want to say it. You know, like potato patata. What is the angle here? Tetrahedral, scare it down two degrees would be what? 107. Okay, so the angle is 107. Okay, and that one is polar. That one is polar. Would this one over here be polar? No. Yes. Yes, yes it would be. If I can take one side away from the other, what, how, did we, how do we show polarity? It's not a full charge, positive or negative, because that would be an ionic bond. 
So what was that symbol we used? Oh, it's the partial thing. Yeah, it's a funny looking D. So since the sulfur is closest to fluorine, it will be a negative. Since the hydrogen's farthest away, it will be the slightly positive side. If we did it over here, we would cut it here. This would be the slightly negative side because nitrogen's closer to fluorine, and this would be the slightly positive side. So closer to fluorine is negative. Closer to fluorine is negative. Okay, so I'm sort of incorporating the next several. It says, be able to take complex form formula and det determine the number of lone pairs of electrons and bond angles. Now, in your um, homework assignment, they would throw up um, something like this, and then they would make you go back and put on it the number of lone pairs and maybe um, tell me the angles of each of them. So here was something that they might do. Um, they also gave you the hydrogen here, 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 and here. So if I look at this, I say, okay, these right here represent a carbon. So every time we have a ju junction, that's a carbon. Carbon has to have how many bonds? Four. Four. How many does that have in the ring? It has three. So um, I'm going to have to put a double bond here, a double bond here. This one's going to be a little funky, but I do put a double bond there because nitrogen needs three, right? And so I show that that also had an unshared pair of electrons there. Well, why does nitrogen need three? Okay, where's nitrogen? How many bonds can it make? So it needs three to get to be a noble gas, right? So that's where that's going to go. Then I look here and say, oh, there's another nitrogen. There's an unshared pair of electrons. And then I say, oh, there's an oxygen. How many unshared pair of electrons did oxygen have? Two. So we have a set here and a set here, or they could have put one on either side, right? Just depending on how they looked at it. So then I can say, oh, okay, this has, this carbon right here has one, two, three things, basically, because a double bond counts as, as one things attached to that carbon. So it's basically 120 degrees. There's nothing pulling it out of the angle. So this carbon right here is in a trigonal planar shape. Whoops. Because there's no ghost. So my angle is 120. Okay, let's pick a different one. What about this one right here? I'm just going to use red to highlight it. What about that nitrogen? What shape would I be in for that nitrogen? It is bent. Why did you get bent? Because there's a ghost. There's a ghost, and there's only two other things attached. Yeah. So if there, it's not going to stay linear, right? Because yeah. that ghost is going to scoot down that angle. It's so it's going to be bent. And this one is going to be a little bit off of that because it's bent in a, in a trigonal planar. So it's going to be a bigger angle than 105. It's going to be a little under 120. Okay, what about this carbon? If they ask that carbon right there, what shape is that carbon in? That's Tetrahedral. Why? Because there's, there's four things attached to it, and they're all not ghosts, right? They're all actual bonds. So four things are attached. It's tetrahedral. What angle? Um, I'm going to keep pounding in here. 109.5. Okay, if I picked... Um, this carbon right here, what about that one? It'd be what? It'd still be tetrahedral. There's four things attached to it, guys. Four bonds, okay? If I come up here, what would that oxygen be? That's a band because it has two unshared pairs of electrons, one here and one here, okay? All right. Would this molecule be polar? Ooh, that's a little scary, huh? So if I look at it, I can, I can sort of split this, and that side would be slightly negative, and this side would be slightly positive. I could sort of split this, because that nitrogen's going to pull out, so this side would be slightly negative, this side would be slightly positive. And this nitrogen's going to pull out a little bit, so that's going to be slightly negative here. That means this side is going to be slightly positive. Do I have a positive side showing up and a negative side overall showing up? Okay, so if you see something like that, write it down and just go to each thing, okay? And then you'll be able to determine that. How many questions do you think we're going to get on something that hard? She'll only do one or two.
Okay. Um, take simple covalent. Okay, so identify the shape of any one element in a complex. That's what we were just doing and determine if it was polar or not. Be able to take the simple covalent molecules and determine if they are polar or not. So the only time that it's not going to be polar is if I have an oxygen bound to an oxygen and they're the exact same. That's basically a nonpolar bond. But if I take an oxygen and I bind it to a sulfur, same bond thing, but that's polar because they're different. Because I'm going to have a slightly more negative on this side and a slightly more positive on this side because oxygen's a little bit more aggressive. Okay? Know the electronegativity trend. We already went over that. And how it affects the polarity bonds. The closer to fluorine, the more negative they're going to be. The farther away from fluorine and closer to francium, the more positive they'll be. Okay, I'm on the back side now. Be able to correctly label and correct symbols for polar molecules with partial positives and partial negatives. We've actually just been doing that. That's the partial negative. That's the partial positive. Don't let her get you messed up. Negative goes to the one that's closest to fluorine. Okay, closest to fluorine is going to be the negative. Farther away from fluorine is going to be the positive. Be able to correctly draw uh, polyatomic and charge and show how it would be displayed. So let's just take like PO3, 3 negative. Okay, thinking back, what's PO3? What's phosphorus? Phosphorus has how many around it? Five, right? It's in nitrogen's column. Oxygen, always red. It has six around it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I have three of these. I also have three extra electrons that are floating in there. So the one that has the least amount is phosphorus. It's got to go in the center. So I'm going to put it in the center. And I'm just going to scratch paper it, okay, because I really don't know how it's going to go together, right? I've got three oxygens that I need to attach. Each oxygen needs two, right? So if I take and I bring an oxygen in here and it shares these two with phosphorus, then that one's taken care of, right? If I take another oxygen in and it shares two right here, it's taken care of. I have one more oxygen, but there's only one more Dot. Wait a minute, I've got three extra electrons. So do I need to share that two right there? Probably not. Let's see. If I put one in right here, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to take this one off the top. Yeah, see, you just got to think it through. I'm not doing this ahead of time, so you're going to think it through just like me. I'm going to have one extra there, and I'm going to have one extra there. Well, there's where my three go. One, two, Three, those are my three extra electrons. So then I would put, I'd redraw it real quickly. Phosphorus to an oxygen, to an oxygen, to an oxygen. And now because we added three extra electrons, we put in the brackets and put a three minus on the outside. Okay, let's do another one. Let's see if you can do it. Let's do NH4 and it's positive one charge. We could pick any of the polyatomics on the back. So any of the polyatomics on the back are free game. Okay? So NH4 with a positive. What does a positive mean? Is this the elements with the octet rule or are we still on the one? We're still on the ones that have that obey the octet rule. So nitrogen we have this. Hydrogen we have just one. But we have four of these. And what does the plus mean? Yeah, it lost an electron. So I'm going to lose an electron. So I'm going to put my nitrogen in the center because it needs the most. And I'm going to bring a hydrogen in. I know one can go here. I know one can go here. I know one can go here. I got one more, and it has an extra electron. So in order for it to come in and be part of this group, it's going to have to give up the electron that it has. So it gave up its one electron, so here it was, and then it gave it up, and then it could come in and bond. Okay, so redrawing it, you would draw nitrogen with one bond up, one bond over, one bond over, one bond down, and put it in brackets saying that I lost an electron, gave up an electron. Okay. Okay, know what elements violate the octet rule? 
What's my special two? Well, you got the P and the S. Yeah, PS, by the way, they get it their way. So phosphorus can bond usually with five and sulfur with six. Um, there's another column that violates the rule. Oh, you have a kidney. Oh, the noble gases, right? No, the noble gases won't want to bond with anybody. There's actually two. Um, hydrogen violates it because it only needs two, right? So the octet rule says eight. And the other one is boron's column. Why? Because it can only bond to get to six because it only has three. So it can only bond to get to six because remember, if it didn't open up that other room from inside, it can't open it up. So when we're talking about electron configuration, oh. remember that? Okay. All right. Be able to look at a Lewis structure and then tell why it is drawn correctly or incorrectly. So if you know what the Lewis structure is for something, right, then if I said, I want you to um, tell me if this is the right Lewis structure for tellurium, and I drew tellurium. Is that the correct structure for tellurium or not? Is that the Lewis dot for tellurium? Tellurium's right here. How many should it have had? Six. six. One, two, three, four, and the other two. So it should have had six. So watch that. Okay? So if she gives me a Lewis dot and asks me if it's right or not, I ignore the Lewis dot and I go, okay, where's tellurium? Okay, how many do I have? I'm going to go around it. One, two, in the S, one, two, three, four, in the P. Oh, it doesn't look like it. By the way, that should have been a TE. I just erased it. Okay? All right, going forward. Um, I'm trying really hard. We talked about electronegativity and difference. Understand that even though bonds may be polar, um, molecule may not be. So if I have a bond like this, Cl, 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 and I didn't put the other extra electrons in, but they'd be there, okay? I know that this bond right here is positive here and it goes to negative. Each of these, that's by the way a symbol that shows you another way to do a partial positive and partial negative. There's no way I can cut that carbon away from those chlorines because remember it's going to be the tetrahedral shape. That bond is polar but the molecule is nonpolar. So make sure you're watching that. Okay, resonance structures. Ah, oh, real fast. Okay. So in a resonance structure, you have something like this, okay? All you do in a resonance structure, the only thing that moves is that double bond. That's the only thing that changes because we're doing different, maybe I have an extra um, electron on there. So you're going to move maybe the double bond to here. So that one would have okay. different structures, right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe I have um, two different things attached, a nitrogen. This nitrogen would still have to be here, okay? If I have something like um, thiocyanide, something like that, the, the, it could go from something like this to something like this. That would still be a resonance structure because I'm changing what the bonds are. Okay, not where the elements are, but how the bonds are put together. Okay, um, be able to rank according to their electronegativity. So again, just remember, fluorine is the highest electronegativity, francium is the least. Now, we got like seconds left. <laughs> so, I am still going to be here after school. Um, I will help you however I can do to get you up to where you need to be to do well on this test. I will put this um, lecture up on, on Canvas so you can look over it again. Make sure you go over that last page and know it backwards and forwards for the test. Make sure you write up your 3 by 5 card and have it ready. I will be here early on Monday morning. Um, I'm hoping, anyway. Um, Monday tutorial I've given to General Chem because they're having a test on Tuesday and I've not been here either for them. So, um, But if you need help, call me in and I'll try and get around to you, okay? Um, we didn't get to the naming type, so I'll do that on Wednesday or I'll do it this afternoon and then put it up, okay? What type of bonds are formed? It's covalent bond and then it's... Uh, where's the network? Our giant covalent right there.
Okay, let me stop this.